Mason Locke Weems, known to history as Parson Weems, wrote The Life of Washington in 1800. Weems's book served as the jumping off place for many fanciful stories about the life of George Washington, none more famous than the legend of George Washington and the cherry tree. In this story, six-year-old George Washington, excited about receiving a new hatchet, gets carried away and cuts down his father's prized young cherry tree. When George's father demands to know what happened to the tree, young George confesses that he did the deed. I cannot tell a lie, says George. George's father is overwhelmed by the young boy's virtue and honesty, and all is forgiven. Sometimes it is hard to think of George Washington as a man because of what Parson Weems and other early biographers wrote. A marble statue, yes. The guy on the dollar bill, yes. But a man? So let's consider his aches and pains to bring him down to earth, specifically his painful teeth. Despite his best efforts to care for his teeth, Washington lost his first tooth at the age of 24. Almost every year thereafter, Washington suffered from severe toothaches, followed by the painful extraction of the teeth. Washington's teeth continued to deteriorate, making it hard for him to chew without pain. In 1773, at the age of 41, Washington wrote to a London merchant thanking him for his gift of two large stone jars of pickled tripe, which is soft and easy to eat. By the age of 49, Washington was wearing false teeth wired to his remaining ones. By the time he is 57 and sworn in for the first time as President of the United States, Washington has one remaining real tooth. That year he receives the first of four full sets of dentures made by John Greenwood, fashioned from hippopotamus ivory and human teeth. Washington owned eight sets of dentures during his lifetime. None of these were made of wood, as some legends suggest, but all were uncomfortable and painful to use. The dentures distorted the look of Washington's mouth and inhibited him from smiling. <laughs>